Hi, Sarah Childress back with you. I recently saw Anthony Mann's 1950 Western, Devil's Doorway, which features cinematography by John Alton. And I wanted to share something with you that kind of leapt out at me from the opening scene, which is a Z-axis cant. Now, we're used to seeing canted angles, which is when the X and Y axes of the frame are tilted. And what that does is it takes everything within the frame off of its horizontal level, making it all appear slightly askew. And it's how filmmakers signal to us that something is definitely wrong here. Now what John Alton does to signal the wrongness of the racial hatred that's already bubbling up in the beginning of the film is to create a z-axis cant through composition. So though his frame remains level, he slices right through the center of it a disorienting diagonal. And to up the ante of that disorientation, he places the malignant character very close to the camera and to us in the foreground, making that character loom large. Now Mann also uses editing to signal the malignancy of that character and to separate him from the more warm community that also is a part of the town. But that's a pretty conventional use of juxtaposition, editing juxtaposition. And I'm much more interested in exploring that Z-axis cant. So let's take a look. A man walks into a bar, goes the old joke, but Lance Poole is walking into a very twisted context. John Alton uses character positions, leading lines, and eye lines to produce a disorienting angularity. It's almost like a spider web, and Lance walks right into the middle of it. The other thing Alton does to introduce a kind of queasy sense that something is wrong is to introduce asymmetry in an unbalanced frame. We associate nature and order with symmetry, so whenever asymmetry is introduced, it gives us a sense that something is off. Yes, sir? What'll it be? Your beer cold? Lance Poo. Hi, Bob. Which is why Alton uses balance and symmetry when he reunites two old friends. Why, oh, I heard the rebels had you for breakfast. <laughs> Zeke, look who's here. Glad to see you, boy. Same here, Zeke. And then expands it into another form of compositional symmetry, triangularity, which provides balance too, but also introduces a sense of stability and maybe even equality. You look like something the hogs drug in. Well, it came 1,800 miles. Uh, here, let's get to welcoming you. <laughs> Bought that trick for a $10 gold piece from a guitar player in Cheyenne defies all laws of engineering. Over the teeth. Then we cut to a camera distance that's farther back, which produces a wider frame and reintroduces the looming figure of Vern Coolen. Before he ever says a word, we know visually that something is wrong. Looks like you did good for yourself in the Army. That medal, all these stripes. What is that, a sergeant? Sergeant Major. When I was in the army, the regular army, we were a little particular who wore those stripes. When Quillen turns to profile and casts his eyes down, he looms a little less and it also mitigates some of that disorienting angularity. However, we are left with an even more pronounced sense of asymmetry. And as you can see, there's a very clear dividing line that keeps the warm reunited community separate from this very malignant influence. We then cut and return to the balanced and stable triangular configuration. Uh, uh, Lance, uh, uh, which way did you come back? The Overland Trail. Did you see the UP? Yeah, 75 miles east to Old Fort Kearney. Now we have a composition that's set in a slightly shallower space. It's really our first conventional medium close-up, and it's also a two-shot, our first two-shot, which visually communicates and establishes the deep relationship, the deep historical relationship between these two men, which involves friendship and partnership that transcend racial divides. That railroad's going to make a lot of changes. A lot of changes, Lance. I can remember when your daddy and I trapped the Wind River country. 
A man could walk a week and never see another living human. Just them mountains, big and purple. It's getting so crowded, a man can't draw full breath. I love this shot, and not only because it seems to pay off what Zeke is saying, but also because it introduces another form of disorientation, which is crossing the 180-degree line. Throughout the scene, the camera has been facing the front entrance of the bar, but now the camera is facing the back of the bar, which produces a more tightly constrained space and seems to cut off his exit, but even more importantly, the camera gets between Kulin and the three friends, cutting him off from them. And what we see here is a portrait of isolation and alienation, a man drinking alone. But the camera also seems to say that hateful men like Kulin should be constrained and limited and separated, kept away from open and accepting communities. Well, I'm going to get rolling. I to see the old man. If I don't miss my guess, he's on his way in here now. How could he know Lance has come back? Well, the wind may be, but he'll know. <laughs> Cullen's then excluded through editing, and when he's reintroduced here, Alton uses expressionistic lighting to keep his face in shadow, as if manifesting the darkness in his heart. Thanks, Bob. See you, Zeke. Fine boy. He'll do all right. Will he? Why not? He never left his father alone. Why should they treat him any different? Do you notice how sour the air got? You can always smell it. With Lance out of the frame, the deep focus and deep space composition is more apparent and maintains the divide and the difference between love and hate. Notice, too, how the warm community is bathed in light while Kulin remains in relative shadow. To end the scene, the shadows deepen and obscure more of his face as he seems to choke on his disgusting words. <laughs> 